Welcome back to Proxam, everybody. And today we're going to be diving into the Eldar Index once more. And I'm going to be talking to you guys about what I think is going to be nerfed and possibly buffed in the next balance data slate. And yes, you did hear that correctly. I do think there are going to be some minor nerfs because of the types of lists that we've seen, you know, being very successful in Eldar competitive play. I think there are a couple units that GW will probably increase the points of. But having said that, I think they're also going to work on, hopefully, you know, if, if they're telling the truth with their claims of internal balance, like they have so many other times before and not done it, <laughs> I think they're going to try to buff some units as well. So we're going to kind of go through and I'm going to give you guys my takes on what units I think they're going to nerf, what units I think they're going to probably buff in, you know, to kind of balance things out a little bit, so to speak. As far as competitive play goes, I don't think it's going to have that much of an impact overall, but I think that it may bring, you know, some new life into certain units in the index. Okay, so starting off with Zerman, I think actually probably will get a points cut. The reason being is because Dire Avengers being a unit that really aren't that great currently, and also, I just think, you know, the Overwatch stratagem has been nerfed several times, and firing Overwatch is not as great on Dire Avengers as it once was, them being more fragile, and them needing to control an objective. I think there's a lot of prerequisites to this being good. And I ran this in the beginning of the edition, you know, I actually had a list with two Dire Avenger units in it, in the very beginning, when Overwatch was really strong. And it's just not as good. It's it's easier to get around for sure. And there's a lot less applications for it. So I do think this guy probably gets a points cut. But again, I, I wouldn't hold my breath on a character like this. This is probably not what GW is looking for. Now I have heard, you know, obviously every Elder player has heard it by now that there are rumors of an Azurman and Plastic coming soon. So maybe that would be a good incentive for, you know, GW to kind of introduce the new Phoenix Lord, actually make him good and playable. I don't think the Autark is getting touched, nor do I think the Wayleaper is getting touched. I think those are exactly the same. They're good. They're auto-includes. Even if GW increased the prices on them, they're still going to be auto-includes. I don't think that changes anything. The Skyrunner, I think... Realistically, I can't see them doing anything with this guy either because he's an old model for one and because I don't think I don't think GW really pays much attention to this guy they didn't even change his path of command so he can actually be off the board and generate command points so I think that's a little weird and I mean obviously his options are not good so I don't think this guy changes either at at most they'll probably just clarify the path of the command it has to be on the board right which is a nerf Avatar of Kane, I don't think changes. Again, he has seen some success in competitive play, but he's not, you know, the end-all be-all. And I think there's a lot of units that compete well with Avatar of Kane anyway, and they can definitely kill him. So he's not unkillable anymore, especially with the lack of fate dice. Baharoth is a unit that has seen some competitive play uh, as of recently with big units of Hawks. And I think that... I think that he just stays the same. And personally, I think he was kind of too expensive before. That was just me. But, you know, now that he, he has actually seen competitive play, I don't think he changes whatsoever. Void Reavers, I don't see changing, to be honest. I mean, they haven't changed so far. You know, maybe slight point cuts, but that's a stretch. I think they're pretty good as is, truthfully, with their scout. And like I said in a previous video, you know, having Scout and Wave Serpents is really powerful. And I think Eldar MSU is something that could definitely come back under the right circumstances, you know. And, you know, we're seeing the Orc Codex come out and stuff like that. And I actually, actually think there's something to be said about, you know, scouting Wave Serpents against Orcs. You know, being able to kind of shut down any kind of defensive stratagems with a Battle Shock. But we'll see. Orcs are not known for great leadership, but they also don't have terrible leadership, so that's still kind of a, you know, hit or miss. Void Scarred really need a points decrease. I can't state this enough. They're a really fancy unit, but they don't really do a whole lot. 
you know, you really have to use them to the absolute best of their abilities to get the points back. And I don't know. I just, I, I feel like they do need a points cut. I think instead of 180, I think, you know, 160, maybe even 150 for them. And I would go so far as to say that, that maybe they should be almost the same cost as the Void Reavers because the Void Reavers have a great ability. And the Void Scarred have an ability that's easy to get around, right? If you pick a, you know, at the start of the battle, you pick a unit in your opponent's army. Your opponent can just ignore that, you know, basically ignore these guys. Or if he knows where you deploy these guys, can just kind of play around it. So, you know, it, it's good, but I think these guys need to be cheaper for sure. Crimson Hunter, I think, is fine. And actually, that's controversial. I think a lot of people don't like the Crimson Hunter, think it's too expensive. But if you think about it in terms of damage, it's 20 more points in a Falcon. But it gets this damage ability against units that can fly. And it comes with an extra Bright Lance. Instead of the Shuriken Cannon the Falcon has. So I think it's kind of comparable, actually. It's not that tough, but it does have a 5 plus invul. I think the biggest thing that hurt this is actually just the fact that we have less fate dice now, so that you know they're they're not as easily disposable. So you're probably not going to be using fate dice to keep this thing alive. But other than that, I think it's fine. I don't think it's a terrible model. And I mean, we have seen it in competitive play before. I just think you know now, especially we're in a meta of heavy infantry more. So. Even though the Pulse Laser is pretty good against Heavy Infantry, this thing for 160 points just... It probably just doesn't make up its points worth. I actually think it's really good into certain matchups, like Imperial Guard, because they have a lot of tanks without invul saves. So this thing can just kind of come in, destroy a Basilisk, or destroy a Manticore or something like that, and make up its points. But then it's immediately probably going to die, so... It's definitely a trading piece. And with the nerf of the Yincarn, I actually think that using a Crimson Hunter in combination with the Yincarn is still an option, but it's just not as good because, again, the Yincarn is kind of a fire and forget now, you know? You kind of throw them in there, and if your opponent can deal with them, then the Yincarn's not going to make up its points. But if the opponent can't deal with them, then it's going to be impossible for, for your opponent to do anything at that point with, you know, a Yincarn in their backfield, so... I think kind of a gimmick, uh, kind of a gamble, the Crimson Hunter, for sure. Dark Reapers, God, I love Dark Reapers. They're going to be great. I don't think they're getting increased in points, even though we've seen a kind of a resurgence of Dark Reapers. They're 80 points already. They've already had their points increase once because of their indirect fire. I don't think that's going to happen again. But they're great, and I think they'll remain the same. And I think they'll still be great after the Balance Data Slate. Death Jester. I don't think anything's changing with this guy. I really don't. He's awesome. And he remains pretty cool. Obviously, I think they've already nerfed Fate's Messenger, so Fate's Messenger is like perfect on this guy, and I think GW probably will ignore the Death Jester. Dire Avengers. So this is the unit that I think is probably going to get a buff of some kind. I would predict... A 5-point decrease, maybe 65 points per 5 for this unit. Just because they are 70 points for 5, that's a little bit expensive considering, you know, they don't do as much damage as you would think. They really need that overwatch. And at that point, you are spending command points to do that. You know, you're spending extra resources. So, I, I do actually think that these guys are due for a points decrease. As far as their melee capabilities, you know, the, the, they're supposed to be an aspect that is kind of a little bit better in melee, but they're just not. They're actually worse in melee than a lot of other aspects, just because they're more fragile. So, you know, I, I think these guys are probably due for a buff. Points decrease, for sure. And there's just way better options for, the co you know, around the same cost. You know, Swooping Hawks are only five points more, but, you know, they have an additional shot on their weapons. Swooping Hawks, they have more range. They have more speed, so it can get into positions faster. You know, this AP minus one, it's it's it looks good, but it's really not that great when you consider most people will be in cover. So you're really not getting the benefit at all from this AP. So definitely see these guys getting cheaper for sure. Eldrad, I think, unfortunately remains exactly the same. 
Now, I'll be the first to admit this. I thought everybody was going to be running Eldrad after the changes, but then it turns out not really many people are running Eldrad in competitive play. And I really just think it comes down to most very competitive tournaments are going to be, you know, very terrain dense. And I think when you think about a terrain dense board, it's really hard to position Eldrad in a way where you can use Mind War and Doom on the same target because you do have to see it, right? The thing about Guide and Fortune is that you only have to see your own units. Doom, you have to see the enemy unit. So in a lot of circumstances, Eldrad is just kind of hard to use, and I think that's why a lot of people don't run them in their competitive lists. Extra Fate Dice is good. Don't let anyone you know tell you different. Having three extra Fate Dice to play around with is awesome. But, you know, I mean, is it's three extra Fate Dice worth 110 points if you're not able to consistently use Doom and Mind War. You know, I, I think that's the main issue with Eldrad. But I love Eldrad. I have him in quite a few lists, and I think he is good. But you do need that line of sight, and it can sometimes be hard to get it on the right unit. So, I don't see him changing, though. But, you know, that's why I think he's not being used as much in competitive play. We have Falcons. I don't really think they're due for a points increase. I think they're pretty solid. They've stayed the same cost the entire edition, and I don't think that's changing. They're very, you know, just basically solid for the points. Farseers, I don't see them changing, although I would actually argue that Farseers need to be cheaper now, now that there's less Fate Dice to work with. You know, after the Fate Dice nerf, I think Farseers are just kind of looking a little bit a little bit more bland, you know. I They're still really good in a lot of builds, but I think it's becoming more and more apparent that they're not a necessity. They're not an auto-include. So you really, when you take a Farseer, you have to consider what else you're taking in your list. If you're running Aspect Heavy, then Farseers just really aren't worth it. Whereas, you know, previously in the edition, they really were worth it pretty much all the time. So I think they could probably do the points decrease. Same thing with the Farseer Skyrunner. You know, and, and just, just to give you guys an idea, the Farseer costs 80 points, right? Like, for 80 points, you can get a unit of Dark Reapers, you can get a unit of, you know, Swooping Hawks, you can get a unit of Shroud Runners. So when a lot of times people are making considerations about that is, you know, does the automatic 6 on the Fate Dice give me enough value to replace a whole nother unit of shroud runners right and most most of the time it's no <laughs> it doesn't same thing with fortune right like do i have several units in my army that can really benefit from this over the course of the next few turns you know if you don't have that if you're going aspect heavy then you don't need fortune either so the farseer is just kind of just kind of dead in the water farseer skyrunner i think is more competitive with you know more aspect warriors Guide is great because it just increases your damage. Branching Fates is okay. You know, you really want one of these if you're running something like the Avatar of Cain or something like that. But otherwise, you really just probably don't want it. You know? You probably don't want it unless you're going to make pretty liberal use of Branching Fates. And I would say if you're running stuff like D-Cannons, that's really good. But, you know, most of the time people aren't running that if they're running a lot of aspects. Although D Cannon's still a very competitive. Okay. I personally like Farser Skyrunners, but you know, they're definitely not an auto include, and I don't think I don't think they're getting their points increased. Let's just put it that way. Okay, so Fire Dragons are a unit that might be on the shopping block for point increases. I'm going to be real. I think they just do super well for their points. 85 points, and they can, you know, on a 4+, plus basically kill a Custodian. That's big. They do need a transport of some kind most of the time, but they're, you know, they can work without a transport as well. They're just really cost-effective. So I think they might go up to 90. I'm hoping they don't. I'm hoping they remain the same. Because the moment these guys start going up in points, I think just in general, they'll probably still be taken. They're still going to be good. But it's it's kind of setting the precedent that, you know, these guys are too efficient and that, you know, maybe, 
you know, we need to look at other units that might be too efficient. That could be kind of a like a, a landslide effect if GW is starting to look at, you know, Eldar units in terms of damage and not in terms of the whole package, right? So that could be an issue. Again, Fire Dragons get more expensive, Shadow Spectres get more expensive, you know, and all the Eldar aspects start becoming more expensive. That could be an issue. So I hope they remain the same, but we'll see. Fire Prisms, I don't think are changing at all. Personally, at 180 points, I don't think they're... They're good, don't get me wrong. And I think, especially with the Fate Dice nerf, like, it's really good to have these. But they're not going to dominate tournament play because, again, line of sight's an issue. And it is very expensive. You have less, you know, kind of room to actually shoot units on terrain-dense boards. So... You know, they're they're good. And then you have a lot of armies that have, just have invul saves, right? The current meta. You just have, you know, Necrons, 4 plus invul pretty much across the board. It's going to be hard for Fire Prism to get their value out of that. Fuegan is a unit that I also think is going to get nerfed. And I don't think any of the abilities are going to get nerfed per se. But I think it's going to get a points increase. I think Fuegan's maybe going up to 130 or something like that. You know, it's it's silly to think that Fuegan would be less than Azurman. So we'll see. But if Azurman goes down in points, then Fuegan's definitely going up. And, you know, it, will that change Fuegan being competitive lists? Probably not. You know, I'd personally pay up to, you know, 130 for him, even 140, I would say, just because of the fact that he's a, a Phoenix gem, essentially. You know, people pay 140 points for the Wayleaper with the Phoenix gem. There's no reason why people wouldn't pay 140 for Fuegan with basically the same thing. So I still think he's great. I still think people are going to take him at 130, you know. I, and honestly, I don't see him going up that high, but, you know, even if he did go up that high, I think people would still use him. Guardian Defenders, I actually think these are fine. <laughs> A lot of people would argue with me about that. I think they're fine. I, I, I don't think they're terrible. It's just right now, I don't think they have a whole lot of value outside of just generating fate dice. And from what I've seen in competitive play, it, it just doesn't look like competitive players really care about the fate dice too much. You know, especially with aspect based lists. You know, if you're running a lot of aspect warriors, what are the chances you're actually going to get a six on that generated fate dice? Probably close to zero, right? I mean, well, I'm. Not zero, but, you know, 16, 70, 17 percent chance of getting a six when you hold an objective. And that's not worth 110 points to a lot of players. The Bright Lance is really cool, but, you know, you could get a Bright Lance on other things, right? You could take a Warwalker, you can get two Bright Lances. So I think that's where Guardian Defenders stand at. I think they're a solid unit, though. I, I really do. I think they're probably a solid, you know, B-tier unit. I don't have anything against them. I just don't think we're going to see any point decreases, right? Like when players start talking about buffs and nerfs, you know, will Guardians get buffed? Are Guardians, you know, so bad that they need a buff to internally balance the index? No, I don't think so. They just don't happen to have a distinct enough and important enough role in the current meta to actually be that useful because we're not using a lot of Fate Dice in the current meta because our fate dice have been nerfed so badly and to give you guys an example i used to use pretty much all my fate dice all 12 almost every one of my games when i was playing just because you know it it was easy you know with the, with the build that i was running beforehand it was easy to use fate dice and find value in different things you know even sometimes just replacing you know a hit roll here and there with a three if i knew i didn't need devastating wounds that turn you know, or if I didn't have a six, right? Or, if, you know, stuff like that. I, I was usually using all of my fate dice. But now it's it's really hard to actually use them because you have so little of them. So typically you may use one or two, and then you really have almost no generation in your army aside from that, which really sucks. So a comparison I would make is Sisters of Battle. Sisters of Battle can get up to 20-plus fate dice, Miracle Dice, the same thing, in a game. Whereas the Eldar, we start out with six, and that's it. And oftentimes, you're just not going to, 
you know, and sometimes you won't even get a six when you roll the dice the first couple times, you know, in a game. You won't even get one six. So that's unfortunate, but it is it is what it is. It's the price. Unfortunately, we had to pay for, you know, having such a good win rate in competitive play. And I actually, weirdly enough, thought that that wasn't even the reason why we were so good. But, you know, GW decided to nerf it. I, I actually hope that they bring some fate dice back. That would be a nice quality of life buff if they said... Actually, you know what? I think we fixed the issues with the Wraith Guard. I think we fixed the issues with the Incarn and the Night Spinner. It wasn't a Fate Dice problem. Let's put Fate Dice back into the Eldar because, you know, Sisters of Battle over here are generating like 20 dice per game. And the Eldar are only getting 6. And it's the same ability, so I don't really think that's all that fair, you know? And especially since Sisters can use more, too. The other thing is Eldar, you know, we have six, and then we're limited to one unit um, per phase. One Fate Dice, basically, per phase, which isn't the greatest. So Guardian Defenders, good unit, just I think their ability just leaves a little bit to be desired when it, when it comes to the chance of you actually rolling something that's usable. Especially if you're not running a Farseer or something like that. God, do we even need to talk about the Hemlock Wraith Fighter? So the Hemlock Wraith Fighter... It's terrible. I hope it gets a points decrease, but who knows? GW doesn't really like flyers. They they don't really touch them a whole lot, so there there it is. I honestly don't think it should have ballistic skill four. I think that's stupid. I know it's a wraith construct, but there's no reason it, it's piloted by a warlock, so there's no reason why it would have ballistic skill four. I think that's the stupidest thing to ever exist. Right? I mean why it's not a it's not a wraith guard it's not a you know a wraith lord or anything like that it's and and by the way the wraith knight has ballistic skill three so that doesn't even make sense right like the wraith knight is piloted by another i think it's piloted by a spirit seer as well it's it's like being like guided by a spirit seer that's why it has ballistic skill three but there's literally a warlock in here why is it ballistic skill four right so <laughs> I would love seeing this go up to Ballista Skill 3 because that's just one of those quality life improvements. I'd love to see that. And I'd actually love to see a, a psychic shooting attack added to this. So, you know, have a, some sort of psychic shooting attack. Like even Destructor, I would even take that. You know, it's not, it wouldn't make the Hemlock Wraith Fighter that good, but at least it would be like fun to use in a game, you know? So, because this Mind Shock pod is just, just awful. It's absolutely terrible. Should probably be within 12 inches instead of 9 inches, so that, you know, when you come off the board, it can actually be used. Turn it comes in. I would love to see a points decrease on this, as well as some upgrades, but I don't think that's going to happen. Howling Banshees, I think they, they will probably just get their points decreased. I would love it if they got an ability and... Basically, in addition to this, or maybe even instead of this, which was just like, you know, they can't be overwatched. That would be great. I think for 85 points, if you add it in here, cannot be targeted by the overwatch stratagem if the unit has advanced or charged that turn. I think that would be amazing. You'd have to word it a little differently, but I think that would be a really good ability on these. And I actually think these guys would be run a lot more at 85 points. I have started running them in a couple of my games, and they've done okay from, you know, kind of strategic reserve, being able to rapid ingress and basically screen out certain units. I've actually also been running Jane's R as well because of free heroic intervention, and it's actually done really good. And I'll talk to you guys about that in a second. But yeah, I don't think Howling Banshees are bad necessarily. I just don't think they, they're worth 85 points for the amount of resources you need to put into them for them to be good. So I'd say, you know, drop them to 75 points so that they compete with Harlequins and Striking Scorpions. Illic Knight Spear's not changing. He's good. He's just, you know, I, I mean, really the role of Rangers is to screen and to infiltrate block and move block. And this guy really doesn't help that. He's kind of like an assassin in a way. With Rangers, he makes Rangers much better at assassinating a range, but because precision attacks, it's so hard to actually draw a line of sight to a character from range. It's just typically not that good. I think it's awesome that he gives his unit loan operative. But again, 
rangers are more of a sacrificial unit and once you give them this ability it's almost like you just want to keep them alive the whole game it kind of incentivizes you to take a bunch of rangers you know take the full unit with this guy and just gets really expensive and there is stuff that can you know with the nerf of phantasm there is stuff that can just just eliminate this so i think that's it's a risky business it looked nice bear he's good though Okay, so Jane Czar. I think Jane Czar is at a great price at 105. I mean, I'd like to see her obviously be less points. So, yeah, Jane Czar, pretty awesome. I think that if you look at what she's giving you for the cost, 105 points, you can put her in a ruin, behind a ruin, next to your support weapons, you know, next to your, you know, night spinners or whatever you got in the back line. I don't know if you're going to take night spinners necessarily, but, you know, in your back line. And then if an enemy tries to kind of assault in to something fragile, like support weapons, she can heroically intervene for free and she can get, you know, a good six attacks off at strength six, AP minus three damage two. I think that's really strong. She hits on twos. She wounds on three. She gets a reroll to hit and wound if she's by herself. Her only weakness really is indirect fire, but she has a two plus save against that. She has five wounds, which puts her out of range of being killed by most indirect fire weapons in the game. So unless your opponent wants to spend, you know, the first, you know, turn just three basilisks firing at her to kill her. I mean, most likely it's just she's going to survive. Right. So the only bad matchup I think she has is Imperial Guard because they don't they don't really want to charge your support weapons anyway, and they probably won't. They'll probably just use indirect fire. Which is, you know, I think sorry Imperial Guard players, I think your indirect fire is gonna get nerfed even further. <laughs> I think it's gonna get nerfed even worse after the latest uh string of tournament victories that you guys have had where you've had players running like, you know, five indirect fire pieces in their army, you know. It's funny, actually it's kind of ironic because I did a video on you know indirect fire being a problem for the game in general not just Imperial Guard but basically from everybody and a lot of Imperial Guard players commented on the on the video and said no don't take our indirect fire away we'll have nothing and it's, it's just like I don't know about that like I, I think it is it is kind of strong you have to admit it is really strong if it's being played in tournaments and sweeping tournaments like that there's probably an issue with it so, Jane's are pretty good. I'm actually, I have a much better opinion of her now than I did in the beginning of the edition, just because she is a pretty good defensive tool. You just got to use her right. I don't think she's good as an offensive tool. Let's put it that way. Cahandras is great, right? Out of a Falcon. I think he's amazing. I don't think he's getting a points increase, though, so that's good. I, I think he'll probably stay the same. Mogan Raw, God, he needs a points decrease. He's really not great. Or he needs to have his ability changed in some way, but you know I don't think he'll be touched either. Unfortunately, I think GW has an aversion to trying to, you know, buff the lesser used Phoenix Lords. But yeah, he's cool. He's really cool. It's just he's not that good. It's kind of like he's a more expensive Death Jester, but worse. That's how I. That's how I kind of like to think of Magen Ra. Night Spinner. I just did a video on this talking about it. So yeah, I'd like to see the Night Spinner get a points decrease, but probably won't happen, especially since, you know, it was so oppressive before. But yeah, it's probably remaining the same. Prince Riel, I, I doubt is going to change. I'd like to see his ability change so that he can deploy, redeploy units after you decide who gets first turn or not. But again, that's probably not going to happen either. I don't see him decreasing in points as well. Rangers, probably unchanged. I think they're great as is, and I think, you know, GW kind of just sees them, as a, sees them as an objective unit anyway, so probably no change there. Shadows here, uh, I... I, <coughs> I wish this was cheaper, because it's really not that good. And um, I think the ability is just not great. I know that some people kind of like the Shadows here, but... I'm still not a fan because you can't use it out of a transport. You need to be at the start of your movement phase, which makes it really hard to use. You know, if you're using Quins on foot and you're just looking for something that can kind of charge quickly across the battlefield, I guess it's okay. But 
again, it's just low damage. You know, the Mist Stave isn't great. It's decent, don't get me wrong, but it's not it's not amazing. Um, and I just think it just kind of falls short, unfortunately. No psychic shooting attack. So, I wouldn't use it for sure. It does give the unit stealth, but who cares? <laughs> you know, I mean... If your Quins are in real trouble, you can always, you know, lightning fast reactions them. So, I just don't like this ability at all. Anyway, hopefully it gets cheaper. Shining Spears need to get cheaper. Uh, I'm actually thinking hopefully GW does that with Shining Spears, makes them like 90 points. I don't think it would solve all their problems, but I think it would go a long way towards people actually being more comfortable to use them, even in casual games with their buddies. I think this is a potentially good unit if it's cheaper. So like 90 points, maybe even 80 points for the unit would make this unit considered. I, I would I would consider taking a unit of these at that cost. Okay. Shroud Runners I don't think are changing. You know, I think they're pretty good for the cost. GW probably recognizes they're, they're pretty just good for the cost. They're not OP or anything. So I don't see them changing much. Skyweavers, believe it or not, I could see going up to 100 <laughs> just because they're... The, the the haywire cannons are so good, but again, I don't think they change much. Solitaire doesn't change. Spirits here doesn't change. Star Weaver doesn't change. Storm Guardians, they don't change. I know some people think they're expensive, but they're actually not expensive. 115 points for essentially a fully upgraded unit of Storm Guardians with you know two fusion guns. Two flamers, two power weapons, the platform, five plus in bull save. It's not just a range, it's all the time now. I think it's a great bargain. It's honestly great. And it's cheaper than, if you account for all the upgrades, they're actually cheaper than Guardian Defenders. Because the way I figure it, you know, they're probably about an 80 point unit base with just the combat weapons. So if you think, you know, they have the platform, which is probably about 15 points, that brings them up to 95. They have four special weapons, even at like five points a piece, which, you know, last edition, the fusion guns were like a little more expensive than five points. I think there were 10. So, you know, you got four special weapons. That's 20 additional points. So that alone is 115 points already. And then you have the power weapons, which are essentially free at that point. So I think that's fine. You know, I think that's fine to have on the Storm Guardian unit. I, I think they're a good cost. And, you know, I mean, I love Storm Guardians. I think their ability is awesome and stuff. So, definitely a good unit. I think that's staying the same. Striking Scorpions staying the same. They're great. I mean, not the best unit out there, don't get me wrong, but they're they're pretty solid as far as melee unit. Support weapons I don't see getting higher. I think they've already been hit so many times. People are still bringing them. I think GW just says, let, <laughs> let it be, you know? Absolutely let it be. I think because they're so fragile... That kind of that kind of balances it out, and they're really slow, so I don't think GW changes these guys. Now, Swooping Hawks are a unit I think might get nerfed slightly. I thought they were going to get nerfed in the last balance data slate, but they might get nerfed by five points a unit. You know, five points for five, so you pay eighty points for five of them. I think they'd still be used, and I think they'd still be spammed at eighty points. I really do. I don't think anything changes there. So yeah, solid unit. You know, don't see anything changing there really as far as the use. I think even if they get nerfed in points. The Visarch initially thought he was terrible at the beginning of the edition. I now think he's pretty good at 90 points just because of how the meta's changed. He's really good at killing, you know, Space Marines essentially, really good at killing mechs. AP minus four means that, you know, Space Marines are not getting a save against them. And that's pretty good. He has precision as well. He can also have, you know, sustained hits, devastating wounds, or lethal hits on his weapon. Obviously, you're probably going to go with sustained hits too against Marines. Against, you know, things with invuls, you're going to go devastating wounds probably. He, he's good, and he also gives his unit fights first. So I definitely think he's a pretty viable option for Quins. The Yincarn, I don't think changes. I think the Yincarn already got nerfed enough. Probably not going to, <laughs> you know, not going to be nerfed again, so to speak. So Yincarn's fine. Troop, I think, stays exactly the same. I think they're great as is. And I think, you know, they don't hit super hard, but with, you know, buffs and character support, they're quite good. 
Troop Master, I don't think, changes. You know, already pretty cheap at 55 points. You know, I don't think it's the best way to run them, but he does give them devastating wounds, which is really good. So, you know, if you're running pure Quins, he's obviously a good option to take. The Void Weaver, I don't think it's touched. Great unit as well, but, you know, I think the only thing keeping the Void Weaver back is that the Prismatic Cannon, while good, I think for 125 points, there's just other things out there that are, you know, that can deal with that a little better, you know? Because you figure at 110 points, you get a Warwalker, and, you know, that's going to be the same profile here, except instead of damage 4, it's going to be D6 plus 2, which on average is better. And then, of course, the Blast is good, but you have to think about, you know, we pretty much have anti-infantry out, out the wazoo in, in the Elder Index, right? So I think Prismatic Cannon is good, but it suffers from that. It's it's The Focus Lances aren't quite good as Bright Lances, and the Dispersed Pulse isn't quite as good as some other options. And actually, if you look at the Dispersed Pulse guys, look at the stats. It's, it's, it's almost exactly the same as the Tempest Launcher on Dark Reapers except without AP minus one. So, you know, <laughs> I don't know how you guys want to take that, but, you know, Dark Reapers are, the, a single Tempest Launcher is better than this profile. So, yeah, anyway, not the greatest of profiles. I, I think the Focus Lance is probably the better one, but again, not the greatest. This thing also does come with Shuriken Cannons, though. So it is good against, you know, mech, but I think there's cheaper options that are good against, you know, marine equivalents. Vipers, I'd like to see them decrease by five points so that, you know, it can actually be a choice between taking, you know, something like a Viper and taking something like Dark Reapers, you know, at 80. But I think it's just a little bit too expensive. I think ignoring cover is awesome. It's a great debuff. But of course, then the issue becomes... This needs to be cheap enough to warrant that, and I think it's just slightly too expensive. But I still like Vipers. I just, you know, they're really easy to kill, and, you know, unlike Shroud Runners, they can also do other stuff too. That's basically all the Viper can do in a turn. Move up, shoot a Bright Lance, remove cover from something, and then probably dies. But I do like the Viper. I'm, I'm, not, I'm kind of a big fan of it, actually. I've found ways to use it in my list for, you know, various, you know, secondary objective stuff and, you know, being part of like these bigger combinations that I like to pull off. I like it, but it's probably just not that competitive because of its low durability and, you know, ignoring cover again, it's good, but is it worth 85 points on something? Probably not. Warwalkers are great. I don't think they're changing. You know, Scouts 9, two Bright Lances and a Power Field, plus an Invul makes it just durable enough to survive, you know, several last cannons. So, you know, it is a good model, but I don't think it's super OP in the fact that, you know, people are going to not, you know, stop taking it or whatever. Or it's going to be nerfed. Warlock Skyrunner, really good. With Wind Riders, I think Wind Riders are on the up and up, so I think the Warlock Skyrunner is good. I think Warlocks should get a points decrease, personally. I don't think they will, but I think they should by at least 10 points. Like, I would pay 45 points for this, for sure. But if you look at the stats, I mean, the movement's good and everything because it's on jet bike, but, but Wounds 3 for a jet, for a mounted character support model, when models like Cryptex have 4 wounds, you know, Toughness 4 is fine. But three wounds? No, this needs to be better, right? And then if you look at some of the Cryptex ranged weapons, the, it's crazy. They have, like, these great ranged weapons. They have these, like, great damaging abilities and stuff like that. I mean, you look at our ranged weapon, Destructor, and you're like, uh, Tor, it's a heavy flamer without ignores cover. It just, it's not as good. I mean, I'm not complaining. Like, I think... It does a lot of damage when combined with, you know, you have the Shuriken Catapult as well. You have possibly a Singing Spear. It's it's good shooting, but I just don't think it's it's that good, you know? I mean, I think, like, things like the Cryptek having stuff with a bunch of AP and good strength and stuff like that is way better for less points. 
So I, I don't know. I think these guys should be a little cheaper. 55 points is a little much to spend on a Warlock Skyrunner. We do it because it makes a Wind Rider so good at eliminating Marine equivalents, but I do think it should be a little cheaper. Same thing with the Warlock. It's 45 points. I think it should be 35. It only has two wounds, which is terrible. You know, it makes it very prone to getting sniped out. It has a 4 plus invul save, but who cares? It's, it's, it's otherwise very squishy. Quicken and Restrain is good. I think this is much better now in this current meta because we lost having a bunch of Fate Dice. So being able to just do this instead of a CP is really good. Restrain is is okay. I think it's going to be better against armies like Orcs, stuff like that. But mostly you take it for Quicken if you do take it one at all. So I think these guys need a, a slight buff. Warp Spiders are good. They're in a solid place. Very competitive, but, you know, still expensive. 115 points is a lot to pay for them. Wave Serpent is good. I would say it's at a pretty reasonable cost. I don't think it's going to get nerfed or buffed, you know. But, yeah, pretty good. <laughs> Ignoring that, that's not going to change. Wind Riders great i think they're great for the cost probably not going to get nerfed or buffed <clears throat> wraith blades are good for the cost you know arguably as you know new stuff comes out there's more threats that can kill them you know some of the things that are happening in the newer codexes is they're becoming more killy and wraith blades are becoming less durable against those kinds of things but they're still good still really tough good at holding objectives nothing wrong with them so I think they stay the same. I think Wraithguard... I would like to see Wraithguard get some kind of love. Because right now they're just really hard to use. They really got slapped. You know? And the War Construct ability getting nerfed. It can only target the unit that shot at it is kind of kind of bad. So, <laughs> you know, I don't know. I'd hope these guys would just get a points decrease again, but I honestly doubt that. Wraith Knight, <clears throat> with how things are with all the nerfs, I think the Wraith Knight needs a points nerf, or a points increase, excuse me. Or, what am I saying? A points decrease. It needs to be decreased in points. I think it's probably good at, like, 480. Um, Just because that way it could be thrown into reserve if you needed to. It's really just one of those like fun units now. It's not competitive at all. There's so many things in the game that can destroy it very easily. So, you know, I, I do think being 480 would be good. Possibly throw it in reserve, stuff like that, and it would be much better. But ideally, I'd want this thing broken up into several different data sheets. I, I definitely think that's something it needs. Wraith Lords. I think Raid Lords are really good for smaller point games. I don't think they're good for for bigger point games because they're they're just not durable enough for the points to be worth that. And they do hit on fours on everything, so you know, that is something you have to consider. And then Faded Hero as an ability is good, but only if you're actually killing stuff. And a lot of the time, because of the nerfs, you can't do the, you know, Spirit Seer, double Bright Lance Overwatch anymore which I thought was awesome. So, you know, you're going to have to just kill things on fours, basically. So I think it's it's possible to do it, especially in lower point games, I think. I think in thousand point games is really where they come into their stride because you can have a couple of these and they can be absolute bullies on the battlefield. But in 2,000 point games, I think they kind of just get lost with the sauce and they're not that tough. Toughness 11 is decent, but you're still going to be wounded by threes against most, like, you know, heavy anti-tank stuff. And only ten wounds with no invul save. You know, I mean, again, they're they're probably going to get an armor save against it. But, you know, I, I mean, still. They're just a little bit less durable than I'd like. But that's not really the main problem. I think the main problem is their movement. Only movement eight. They're also monsters, so it's hard for them to get around stuff. And that's what I think is a little bit of an issue with these guys, because they have a low movement. So, But I like them. I still run a Wraith Lord in, my, in, in some of my semi-competitive lists. I have a Wraith Lord running around. I think it's just, just good to have. <laughs> I just like them. I just have one painted up 
you know, how I like, and I use him because I like him, and that's it. But do I think he's super competitive? Nah. He's easy to deal with, and I think that's his problem. But if you decreased his points, I think he could be a lot more viable. I think 140 would be good. I'd definitely pay 140 for this guy. I think that's a much better cost for him. You know, he trades much better at 140. He's a much better nuisance at 140. I can, you know, kind of put him into situations I know that he can trade up in at 140. Versus 160, I almost have to play him very, you know, kind of more conservatively than I would have liked. Okay. Lastly, for our index units, we have Yvrain. And Yvrain is awesome. She's good. I don't think she needs to be changed at all. I don't think she's going to be getting nerfed either. I, I, I really don't. Great attack, both in melee and at range. Great abilities, especially with Quinns. She's just absolutely tough to deal with. I love you, Vrain. And, you know, shout out to one of my subscribers who sent me a pro-painted Yvrain model that he painted himself, Toys for the Doy God. Thank you so much. I'll never forget that. Great. Honestly, like every time I feel Duvrain, I have so much fun because that model is painted so good. And it's it's like everything else in my army is just kind of mediocre. But like Duvrain looks amazing. So I absolutely love using Duvrain. She's really cool. And awesome unit with Harlequins. I'm actually thinking of picking up another plastic kit of Harlequins just to, just to make sure she can run with a, a unit of 10 but anyway and so i don't have to proxy anything either because as of now if i want to run a unit of 10 i have you know about five or six of my quinn models proxied as just like something else old guardian models okay let's talk about the conclaves they need a points decrease absolutely i think you know it costs I think it's 40 points. Yeah, it's 40 points per jet bike. I don't think they're worth 40 points per jet bike. I think they're they're a 30 point per jet bike unit or maybe even 35, I say. So drop these guys by 5 or 10 points per model and they're they're excellent. Same thing with Warlock Enclaves, except, you know, obviously don't drop them by 10 points. Drop them by 5 points a model and they're good. You know, Wounds 2 is fine on these guys because they're part of the Conclave, but I think the character ones need an extra wound or something, or they need to be cheaper, basically, if you're not going to give them more durability. And I can understand you not wanting to give an Eldar character a lot of wounds or a lot of toughness, but at least give them at least give them less cost then, right? Make them cheaper. So that's Warlock Conclaves, and I think that's it. And that's... Oh, let's go over the units that are going to be in Imperial Armor, so... Shadow Spectres, I don't see increasing anymore. They already got increased to 95 points. I think from 80 earlier in the edition, I don't think that increases anymore, to be honest. I don't think that they deserve to get increased. I think they're really good, but, you know, I don't think they're... Let's just put it this way. If GW increased them to, like, 110, I don't think nearly as many players would use them. And I think we would start seeing things like, like way more Wind Riders in lists, for example. Um, I think you might see, like, a Shadow Spectre here and there, but you wouldn't see as many. Um, anything else that I think needs buffed? I, I think maybe the, the Wraith Seer as well needs to be down to 140, just like the Wraith Lord. I think the... I guess that's it. I mean, I think the Lynx needs to be down a little bit. Maybe, like, at like 170, 160 instead of 180. And there's a couple of other things here and there. Hornets, I think, are good, you know. But that's about it. I, I think, for the most part, I think our index is going to be pretty solid. I think we're going to see very few changes. We'll probably see a couple of points nerfs and a couple of points buffs here and there on you know, some of our less points-efficient units and some of our more points-efficient units. But I don't think we're going to see any major changes. And honestly, that's how I like it. You know, I don't think we're going to see much changes. We're right at 50% win rate. So I think as as a faction, that's in a really good spot to be because you're kind of overlooked when it comes to nerfs and buffs, you know? I mean, the buffs, we'll probably get some minor ones, which are probably all we need, and then we'll probably get some minor nerfs to, like, offset that maybe. And that's it. And I'm hoping that's how it stays. Um, I did have a video planned for you guys covering, you know, tournament play and how to kind of prepare for a tournament, but unfortunately... 
that video got corrupted and I was unable to actually finish it. So I'm, I'm hoping that I can re-download it and it'll be fine, but we'll see. So that'll probably be out next week if I'm going to be perfectly honest, because it did take a long time to actually make the video. And then just to have it be corrupted was like really disappointing. So anyway, we'll talk about that. I'll probably have a video out next week on that. But, you know, in the meantime, we'll have some more Eldar videos coming. And um, if you guys have any requests, let me know. You know, you guys are the community. I want to know what you guys want to see. I have an Iandin video coming out soon, talking about how to build a competitive Iandin list after all those nerfs. I, I did one at the very beginning of the edition, but that was when they were really strong. So, like, you know, how do we kind of, as Iandin lovers, as, you know, lovers of the wraiths, how do we kind of rethink running Iandin lists, you know, now? And I think... It's going to come down to using some different strategies. Um, but, but we'll talk about that in the video. But other than that, that's going to be it for today's video. Let me know in the comments again what you guys think. What do you think is going to get nerfed? What do you think is going to be buffed in the new balanced data slate? And if you guys want to support the channel, I do have Patreon free trials activated. And I do want to thank all the people who have supported me over the last year and a half. You know, become Patreon members, donated. You know, anything that you guys have done, you know, purchase stuff on the channel store page. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much. Um, I'm going to continue to try to, you know, make this channel better, do more stuff. I'm hoping pretty soon, once I get everything painted to a good quality, that I can start doing some battle reports. So if you guys have ever wondered, oh, Proxy Hammer, why don't you do battle reports? Well, it's because my <laughs> my regular army that I use is in very poor condition a lot of it was painted when i was a child and it has a lot of nostalgia for me but it's not exactly something that would be make good content online <laughs> and you know i use a lot of proxies as my name would suggest and i just don't think it's very visibly pleasing so i, I don't want to do that i want to have painted models on the channel if i do battle reports that's just something i've always thought about and so hopefully i can get a fully painted army I'm hoping by the summer and then that way I can start doing battle reports and stuff like that. And it'd be fun, uh, for everybody. So, you know, once again, um, just want to thank everybody who supported me. And if you do want to help support the channel, I have Patreon for trials activated. I do have a discord. You will get invited to the discord permanently, even just on a free trial. And, uh, you will retain access to that discord forever. So, you know, if you do want to join the Discord, there's a lot of Eldar players and enthusiasts who love talking about, you know, different strategies and tactics and everything like that on there. And it's a very open community. We're very, I, I would say, open to new ideas, you know. It's not like, I, I know that the main Eldar Discord is a little bit sometimes, you know, iffy when it comes to certain new ideas or stuff like that. So we're open to anything here, and we like talking about different stuff. So if you do want to come join us feel free. I'll leave the link in the description. Um, if you want to purchase something on the channel store page, get some Eldar inspired apparel to rep your local game store, rep the Eldar. I'll leave that link as well in there. 25% um, off on all items currently and probably for the rest of the year, just, just because I, I want people to rep the stuff, rep your favorite faction and rep the Eldar. It's not so much about, you know, filling my pockets. It's just about, you know, getting the stuff out there so that there's more Eldar, <laughs> Eldar love out there. And, um, you know, lastly, if you do want to buy some discounted Elder Miniatures on Amazon, I'm also an Amazon affiliate. So uh, check out the links for those in the description. And I'll see you guys next time. Have a good one, everybody. Peace out.